Devil's Bridge is a term used to describe numerous ancient bridges scattered across Europe and in North America. The majority of these bridges are constructed using stone or masonry arches, showcasing remarkable advancements in ancient architectural techniques. Their unique designs have captivated the imagination of people throughout antiquity and medieval Europe, giving rise to various fascinating tales and legends. Each Devil's Bridge is accompanied by its own myth or folktale that is intertwined with the Devil. These stories differ greatly depending on the region and the beliefs held by the local populace. Some narratives attribute the construction of the bridge to the Devil himself, emphasizing the perceived impossibility or instability of such a structure. It is believed that only the Devil possessed the power to create such a bridge. In other story, the knowledge to build these bridges was bestowed upon humanity as a result of a pact, deal, or bargain struck between the devil and the local community, often involving the exchange of souls. One version of the tale portrays the bridge builder and the devil as enemies, highlighting the challenging circumstances under which these bridges were constructed. For instance, the Tufels Brook at the St. Gotthard Pass was built under such difficult conditions that the builders and the community had to exert a heroic effort to successfully complete the bridge, thus earning its legendary status. Alternatively, other versions of the legend depict an elderly woman or a humble herder who strikes a deal with the devil. In this rendition, the devil agrees to construct the bridge on the condition that he receives the soul of the first person to cross it. However, the devil is ultimately outsmarted by his opponent by enticing a dog with bread to cross the bridge first, and he is last seen descending into the water, bringing peace to the community. In the case of the Steinerner Brücke in Regensburg, the legend tells of the devil assisting in a race between the bridge builders and the cathedral constructors. It is said that a small bump in the middle of the bridge resulted from the devil's furious leap when he was deceived and denied his reward. The legend of Ponte della Maddalena in Borgo Amazzano, province of Lucca, recounts a tale of a local saint, often Saint Julian, the Hospitaller, who strikes a deal with the devil. When the time comes to fulfill the pact, the saint cleverly tricks the devil by setting fire to a dog or a pig, which then crosses the bridge, leaving the devil deceived. At Sense, a legend from the 13th century tells of an architect who sells his soul to the devil but later repents. McCulcure of Sense manages to drive the devil away using holy water and an exorcism formula that starts with the words Vade Retro Satana, which he has the penitent repeat. This formula was eventually incorporated into the design of the popular Saint Benedict medal. Many bridges that have earned the Devil's Bridge are notable for various reasons, such as the technological challenges overcome during their construction, their aesthetic beauty, or their economic and strategic significance to the communities they serve. Coconino National Forest, Sedona there's nothing inherently evil about the Devil's Bridge Trail. It's the drive to the trailhead that's possessed by demons. Sharp rocks, big boulders, deep ruts, steep drop-offs, Forest Road 152 passes through the seven gates of hell. It's rugged and threatening. In fact, unless your car is a 25-ton infantry fighting vehicle, you'll have to consider the other options. And there are several, one is to park at the Dry Creek Trailhead and hike about a mile to the Devil's Bridge Trailhead. Another option is to park at the Mescal Trailhead, which is located along the shoulder of Long Canyon Road. From there, the hike heads east on a red dirt track. The trees are pinons and junipers and is about 20 feet tall. You'll see manzanitas and prickly pears, too. Then, after about a minute, you'll come to a bypass. Once you get across, you'll continue meandering through the trees and eventually drop down into another small wash. The trail follows the bottom of the stream bed, which is rocky, but not really technical. Then, after about 15 minutes of overall hiking, it intersects the Chuckwagon Trail. Along the way, you might see Stellar's Jays, a swatch of bright blue against a palette of earth tones. Even more impressive are the views of the surrounding red rocks, including Mescal Mountain to the west and Courthouse Butte to the south. Ten minutes past the intersection, you'll arrive at the Devil's Bridge Trail. Just across the road is the official trailhead for this hike, which leads into a wide valley on the north side of Capitol Butte. The Devil Bridge Trail is short, easy trail that begins as an old wagon road. It's all uphill from this point forward, but it's not enough to slow you down. About 10 minutes in, you'll come to a cairn on the left that marks a faint trail. But it's a worthwhile detour that wins for 30 or 40 yards to a great view of Devil's Bridge, the centerpiece of the hike. Despite its name, the rock formation is technically an arch, not a bridge, it was created by wind and weather erosion and not by flowing water. Nevertheless, it's an impressive landmark that ranks as the largest natural sandstone arch in the area. Late afternoon is the best time to make a photo from this vantage point. 
Back on the main trail, you'll quickly cross into the Red Rock Secret Mountain Wilderness, which is home to elk, black bears, mountain lions, ringtails, badgers and bobcats. It's unlikely you'll see any of those on this route, but the social responsibilities of hiking in a wilderness remain the same. Continuing up, you'll pass through a wash and a thicket of trees, after which the trail veers left and arrives at a steep set of natural rock steps. It shouldn't take more than two minutes to make the climb. At the top, the trail levels off and heads east. Although it's always a good idea to watch your step, you'll want to start looking to your left, too. To get there, keep walking and follow the trail as it continues through some trees and down to the rim. The bridge will be to your left. Proceed with caution and enjoy the views, which, as you'll see, are antithetical to what you'd expect at a place called Devil's Bridge. From the roundabout intersection of State Route 179 and State Route 89A in Sedona, go southwest on for 3.1 miles to Dry Creek Road. Turn right onto Dry Creek Road and continue 2.7 miles to Long Canyon Road. Turn right onto Long Canyon Road and continue 0.2 miles to the trailhead on the right. A $5 day pass is required but no vehicle is allowed. Dogs are allowed and horses are also allowed. In summary, beat the crowds at Devil's Bridge by arriving early or late to secure parking and enjoy a memorable experience among stunning scenery. The trail offers worthy views with a relatively flat path. Plan ahead and be prepared for potential costs with a Red Rock Pass. Stay safe on the hike by wearing sturdy footwear, staying on designated trails, and being aware of your surroundings. Enjoy the majestic scenery. Ready to conquer Sedona's most celebrated hike? Devil's Bridge, with its breathtaking natural arch and Instagram-worthy views, is a must-do for adventurous souls. Sedona, Arizona, beckons with its vibrant red rocks, diverse hikes, and charming atmosphere. It's the perfect getaway for outdoor enthusiasts seeking stunning scenery and an active escape. It is a four-mile round-trip trail, offers a relatively flat path leading to the iconic sandstone arch. So let's now delve into the 10 things you need to know before hiking the Devil's Bridge. Number 10 Early Bird Gets the Bridge Visitors to Sedona during peak season in spring and fall are advised to arrive very early by 7 a.m. or wait until late afternoon after 4 p.m. to secure parking and avoid crowds on the Devil's Bridge hike. The Mescal Trailhead and Dry Creek parking lot usually fill up quickly during peak hours. Late afternoon offers excellent lighting for photographs and potentially fewer hikers on the trail. Before heading to the overflow parking on Boynton Pass Road. It's recommended to check for available spaces at the Mescal Trail parking area first, as avoiding the walk on Dry Creek Road offers a significantly more pleasant experience. Number 9 What to expect on the trail the gravel route that gradually descends to the parking space along the Devil's Bridge Trail offers breathtaking views of the surrounding green forests and red rock cliffs. The trail climbs steadily uphill from the parking lot to the bridge, with large stairs to facilitate the ascent. Along the ascent, there are multiple chances to stop and take in the scenery. Near the top, there's a natural rock platform providing a picturesque spot to rest and enjoy the valley views. It may be difficult for some to navigate the steeper and tougher steps in the final stretch before reaching the bridge, but it's just a short distance. Number 8 thing to know before hiking the Devil's Bridge is, trail traffic. Trail traffic along the first well-signed mile, following the Mescal and Chuckwagon trails, remains constant, often with small groups moving in fits and spurts. Bottlenecks occur where the route becomes steeper, ascending uphill on rough-cut sandstone staircases. Approximately 0.2 miles before reaching the bridge, where the route enters the wilderness area, traffic slows to a near standstill due to a fork in the trail. One branch leads to the space below the arch, while the other leads to the final stairs to the top. On weekends, the trail can become crowded, with hikers elbow to elbow in a scenario of chatter and awe. Solitude may not be readily available, and visitors should be prepared for this experience. Hiking length is 1 to 3 hours and elevation is between 400 to 500 feet. Number 7 Devil's Bridge Viewpoints To capture the iconic shot of Devil's Bridge, photographers have two excellent viewpoints to choose from. One option is to venture towards the edge of the cliffside, slightly to the left of the main trail, to truly capture the height and scale of the bridge. Another ideal spot is on the other side of the small waterfall. Visitors can reach this spot by either crossing through the waterfall or taking a path at the top that bypasses it and leads down to the desired location. This viewpoint provides a stunning view of the valley and is often favored by photographers. 
Alternatively, photographers can look for a small turning on the left side of the main trail, opposite the waterfall, to find a ledge offering a less commonly photographed perspective from the other end of the bridge. Number 6 How Dangerous Is Devil's Bridge? While Devil's Bridge is generally safe, incidents have occurred over the years due to various factors. Falls, injuries, and fatalities are rare, but caution is advised. The surrounding rocky terrain poses more risk than the arch itself, with slippery conditions being a concern. For instance, in April 2014, a California woman tragically fell from a rocky ledge, resulting in a fatal 75-foot drop. Similarly, in December 2014, a Tucson woman succumbed to injuries after a fall while navigating a rocky staircase. Despite such incidents, rescue crews remain vigilant in the area, responding to emergencies promptly. So let's talk about the fifth things you need to know before the hike. Are there any days when it is closed? While Devil's Bridge isn't closed on specific days, access to the trail can be temporarily restricted due to various factors. Park rangers typically close the trail for public safety during events such as flash floods or heavy rain. During periods of high fire risk, authorities may close the trail to minimize potential fire hazards. If search and rescue operations are underway in the area, the trail may be closed temporarily to ensure the safety of both rescuers and the public. While infrequent, some areas within Sedona undergo seasonal closures for resource protection or cultural significance. Number 4 How Wide Is Devil's Bridge? Walking across Devil's Bridge is generally safe, as the top of the bridge is wider than it appears in photos. The middle of the bridge gets narrower, but not to the point where people will get alarmed. Visitors must use caution and pay attention to their footing, though, as the arch's sides are devoid of rails. If someone is already crossing the bridge, it's best to wait for them to return before proceeding. Number 3 Best Season to Hike Devil's Bridge The best season to hike Devil's Bridge Trail is generally considered to be winter. Hiking is more pleasurable during this season because of the lower temperatures and fewer crowds. In contrast, hiking in the summer months, particularly in July and August, can be challenging due to extreme temperatures that often reach triple digits in the Sedona area. To ensure a safe and comfortable hike during the hotter months, it's important to start early in the day to avoid the peak heat, wear protective clothing such as a long-sleeved shirt, hat, and sunscreen, and carry an ample supply of water, along with salty snacks and electrolytes to prevent dehydration. Number 2. Look for where to stay. When planning a hike in Sedona, considering the hotel's location is crucial. There are various options available, ranging from resorts with amenities like pools and on-site restaurants to cozy boutique-style hotels, family-friendly resorts, adults-only bed and breakfasts, and highly rated budget properties. One recommended choice is Enchantment Resort, located approximately 20 minutes away from Devil's Bridge. The casitas at Enchantment Resort are elegantly appointed, offering a comfortable retreat after a day of hiking. The last one. Number one beyond the bridge. Forget the crowds at Devil's Bridge. With countless opportunities for adventures, Sedona, Arizona, is a haven for outdoor enthusiasts. Hike diverse trails, each showcasing unique rock formations and whispering tales of the past. Feeling adventurous? Consider pairing the Devil's Bridge hike with the Chuckwagon Trail for a full day of adventure. The Mezcal Mountain Trail is another easy yet beautiful hike in the area that is worth trying. This six-mile out and back trip also offers views of the surrounding area as it crosses exposed, slick rock. After all, Everyone has already snapped their photos at Devil's Bridge.